If you've ever tried editing a MATLAB plot output in Adobe Illustrator or other vector-based graphics tool, you know how frustrating it can be. I put this tutorial together to show you how to overcome some of those MATPLOTLAB challenges and produce beautiful plots in Adobe Illustrator. In this tutorial, I'll step you through how we set up the plots so we can bring them into Adobe Illustrator. There's not going to be a lot of technical depth in this presentation or this video, but there's a lot of gotchas that can help you save some time and get those plots the way you want to look into Illustrator. We'll start by bringing in the libraries we plan to use. And what I do here is I copy from a template that I have over on the, the side, a master notebook. This is just a specific example, so it's a little bit of a shorter set. And we're going to bring in matplotlib as well. I'll explain why as we get towards the end of the video. Um, I will give you a heads up. What we're going to do is, first of all, do a lot of our plotting and our structuring with the default backend render, and then we'll execute a command, and we will switch that to use Cairo, which I found to be a pretty good backend render, to get true fonts out in a plot instead of being stuck with shapes or something that you can't edit in Illustrator or Inkscape or whatever you're using. We're going to want our plots to be inline, at least for why they're visible. And we're going to want to be able to define our, our fonts. Some papers, some books have style guides that require specific font families. So with these commands, we can bring in the font family that we want. In this case, I'm just going to do Arial. And I think we need a font size of about 12. I don't know if you're going to run into this, but I had some of my installations of Python did not have Cairo as a back end. So if you're using a standard version of Python, just regular Python 3.9 or whatever, this is what you would execute to bring in the package using inside Jupyter. If you're using Conda, uh, this is what I found worked for my Conda environments. Last thing we're going to do is we're going to define the font itself. You'll see where we need to bring this in in the titles and some of those areas so that the plot generates a text or font-based glyphs instead of those shape-based glyphs. We're going to define a really simple signal for this. This is a sinusoid. It's going to have two cycles in it, quite a few samples, so we get a nice smooth plot. It looks like a continuous waveform. There are a couple other things that we're going to want to do because we're formatting this plot for publication. We're going to want to define our major and minor tick marks for the x-axis and also for the y-axis. The reason I do this is I like to have the major tick marks. They're typically a solid line, uh, and they give a little bit of depth when you look at that solid line compared to that dashed line in the background for the minor tick marks. It's really critical if you have a spectra or something that's a log scale. And I, you'll have to check me on this, but I believe if you choose a log plot in matplotlib, it turns on the minor tick marks by default. Let's get that plot started. Whenever I am plotting for a publication, a presentation, I always have to control the figure size so I get the aspect ratio correct. It matters a lot if you're doing a two column print versus a single column print, so I define that figure size. And this command here where we have the minor ticks on, if you don't have the minor ticks turned on, all of the work we did up in the eight and nine lines are not gonna show up. You'll only get the major tick marks. These next few lines set up our X and Y axis labels and our ticks. After we set up our X and Y axis ticks, we're going to want to have the grid lines on there. And then we have a few more things we need to take care of. We want to have a title and we want to be able to save it. So I've set up this plot so that the title is using a formal font properties, whereas these labels aren't. And what you'll see when we get into Illustrator is those are rendered very differently in the PDF. And I've saved it both as a PDF and a Savage format, SVG format. We'll probably just look at that PDF. So let's see what that plot looks like. The plot has all the essential elements you need. It has access with labels. It has major and minor uh, grids. And I think this is a pretty good one to work with. Now, the, the problem is, and I'll show you, if you go into that PDF that we just generated, screwed up. You have to save it before you show it. If you have those commands reversed, which is what I just did, you get a blank document, which is 
not as much fun to edit. Using that built-in back render it doesn't look too bad at first glance. And what I do when I'm post-processing an image, the first thing is I'll select everything on there and I will release all the clipping masks. And that'll allow you to break this image apart. Um, I'll do more work later, but I do want to show a few things. So when you look at your text, it is not a text, it's a shape. Um, and in fact, that's true up here in the title and in the access labels. And that's a real pain because if you ever find a misspelling or an edit, you've got to go through and replace all these shapes with actual fonts. So this is not a very desirable output. We're going to change our script in the background here, and we're going to change the render engine from the default to Cairo. The reason I didn't do this in the beginning, and you would probably want to do this in the beginning, is it won't display the plot anymore here in the inline screen of the Jupyter Notebook. So this line here is going to change that back engine renderer to Cairo. Cairo. I'm going to re-render that and uh, of course it made a bit of a liar out of me but it does show the warning message that this is a non GUI backend so it cannot show the figure. Um, one of the things that's a little odd about this is if I were to restart the kernel and run through this it wouldn't show the figure so this might be a leftover from that previous render. And I will switch over to Adobe and Illustrator. In terms of appearance, this looks almost identical to what we had before. I'm going to do the same thing and release the clipping mask. Now, those access labels, those are fonts. The title is also font. Interesting, in some of my other environments, uh, the access labels will still be rendered as glyphs or as shapes, and the title will come through as a font. Um, so it may depend a little bit on how your environment is structured, whether you need to do that or not. But with Cairo as the background, now everything comes through as text, and that lets us do some nice things. If we want to change alignment, say for example on these labels, we can select them all, right align, put them on the right, and put them right where we want to. And that gives you a very editable figure. And what uh, I usually do before I do any editing is I will create a new layer. I'll move all the data. Oftentimes there's legends and other things that go on there, so this is probably not the best example. Um, but I will move all the data to a dedicated layer. I usually call this background. And the reason I do that is the background has got a lot of information in it, all these uh, grid lines and ticks. And I want to times, a lot of times make that so I don't have that in my editing path and that way I can just work on this here directly. Now you can take this path and if you wanted to do something like add a drop shadow for example you've got that in here as a vector. I don't know why you'd want to do that necessarily but it's kind of a cool effect um, and you can add any other of uh, the vector effects to the plot that you want to now it stands off. I'll post links to the GitHub repository with this worksheet and to the website blog that has a little more details. Thanks for listening and I hope you enjoyed this video.